How's it guys and welcome back to the first hand sealer video of 2025. I can't believe we're in 2025. This is crazy. As you can tell it is freezing in France. So I'm literally wearing like a blanket hoodie because it's so cold and this is the only thing that's keeping me warm. Anyway that is a story for another day. As a born and bred Dovanite from South Africa I'm used to hot weather and even after being in France for over four years now I'm still not quite used to the cold. But anyway. Today I want to play you a video that I actually recorded almost three years ago. I recorded this way back in 2022 and I still think that it's relevant today which is why I want to start it off as my first YouTube video for 2025 and you'll see how relevant all of this information that I had mentioned is still ongoing in today's world. If you're new here I'm Han I talk about all things to do with graphic design and running my own freelance graphic design business but I also work in web3 tech. I'm a creative director and working in web3 tech and tech in general is what I'm skilled in and this is what I do on a daily basis. So all of this is not new to me this is actually what I have spent years curating my skills for. So being in the Web3 space or the metaverse space, virtual reality, augmented reality, doing UI and websites and all sorts of stuff like that, specifically for tech spaces, blockchain, metaverse and so on. That is what my skills are for. This is what I've spent years doing. Let's start off 2025 with this video as like a little recap to see that the topics that I was actually interested in and talking about and discussing and enough to make a video back in 2022 about is still relevant today especially given web 3 especially given the state of the internet where we are today i think that this is still a very relevant topic so let's move on to the video and you can see me from three years ago <laughs> I feel like this is like a little time capsule, so that's kind of cool. Hey guys, welcome back to another hand sealer video. So if you are in any sort of industry that uses the internet, you may have heard the term Web3. So this is basically a definition video <laughs> explaining what Web3 is according to me. There is no like definite definition of what Web3 is, but this is my understanding of it. I do work full time in Web3, in a Web3 tech company. So this is what I do every day. And this is coming from my personal experience of what I understand Web3 to be. So hopefully this will give a bit of insight into my world <laughs> and what awaits for the future of the internet. So Web3 is basically the next generation of the internet. It's the third generation of the internet. So when the internet first started, we started with Web 1.0. Web 1.0 is basically read only. So you could basically just read the information that was given to you online. You couldn't interact with it. You couldn't edit it. You couldn't comment. You could just read that information and that is it. Then we moved on to Web 2.0. We are currently in Web 2.0. Web 2.0 is basically read and write. So like Facebook, for example, you can make a post and you can post it and then you can comment on other people's posts. So you can write, you can share it, you can edit it, you can change it, <laughs> you can interact with it. Web 2.0 was also the rise of targeted advertising. So we would sign cookies like we totally know what they are. And these large corporations knew our personal details and they were able to then target us specifically as a person, who we are, what we like, our interests, our dislikes, and target adverts specifically for us based off the information we have provided or off the information they have collected from us. That was part of Web 2.0. Read, write, targeted advertising. Another aspect of Web 2 was very much user-generated content, uh, advertising and marketing campaigns based a lot of their projects on gaining user-generated content, getting their users to interact, to share, to post, to show their identity, to share their pictures of their family and this and that and whatnot. Like that is very much a Web 2 mindset. Then we move on to Web 3. So Web3 is now the third generation of the internet and it's basically all about decentralization, taking away a big CEO that controls everything, uh, giving the power back to the communities. So there's a lot of DAOs, which are decentralized autonomous organizations, which are owned by communities of people. So if a decision needs to be made, there's no one person that can just shut it off. You need to have like a collective vote. So it's about decentralization, DAOs, moving our finances to DeFi, which is decentralized finance. So your money is no longer kept by a centralized bank that can call the shots and do what they want with your money. You have full ownership of your, your assets, of your money, of your information. You can stay anonymous. You don't have to tell anyone who you are. There's no like monopoly of information or, or certain large companies owning everything. Web3 also focuses very much on transparency. And that's been amazing, especially with the use of blockchain technology. Blockchain in the simplest forms, I could do a whole video on this, is basically a digital ledger. 
So think of it like in accounting, you would have a ledger of all your books, your, your finances, and that's basically what the blockchain is. It's a ledger to show who bought what and when and why and how and where it is and who has it and whatnot. Like you cannot escape the blockchain. Every transaction that happens on a blockchain is solidified in basically matrix code. So yeah, Web3 is very much about transparency, open internet where everyone has access to that information, basically giving the power back to its users, not the power sitting with CEOs or presidents. So Web3 is going to become a large part of how we do business in future, how we do personal things in future. So when people think of NFTs, they're like, oh, NFTs are Web3 and blockchain is Web3 and voice AI is Web3 and AI is Web3 and VR is Web3 and that's <laughs> that's not really it. Like Web3 is just the section of the internet. I think a lot of people also confuse blockchain technology with Web3 and NFTs with Web3. NFTs are not the internet. Blockchain is not the internet. Those are two very different things. NFTs are technology. Blockchain technology is a technology. It's not the internet. Because I think a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I can just online shop online. I can just do this online. I'm like, cool, you can. But remember, it's not internet that you are transacting on when you're on a blockchain. It's, it's a technology. It's a whole other thing. <laughs> I know that's off topic, but I just wanted to kind of throw that in. And yeah, with Web2, basically the data that you interact with, the data that you create and share is not owned by you. So Web3 is about giving the ownership back to the people that own it. It's about not having a centralized group in charge. I think we are obviously in the very early stages of Web3, but obviously working in tech every day, I can see the potential that this type of internet has. And it's crazy. Like, yeah, there's some really cool things. And especially in terms of how information is shared and traded and interacted with like I think gone are the days of privacy struggles that was obviously a big thing that we had in web 2 that people didn't like was the information was so easily traded across platforms to various people in web 3 the only way someone can take your assets or take your money or take something that belongs to you is if you give them that permission if you specifically provide that information no one can come in and just take something away from you without you granting them access and you've got to be very careful of who you grant that access to web 3 is also very much an incentive driven type of internet I would say you know a lot of projects that we'll see come out are very much incentivized to gain that project's token or to to earn it or to build a community and I think that's a very big thing in web3 is the community you know it's not you can't just buy your followers anymore <laughs> you've actually got to interact and build and grow with this community because if you build a community and they want to get involved in your project and they invest in that because they can get voting rights or they can get a little bit of, you know, they can get ownership of a certain percentage or stocks or tokens or whatever. They have an incentive to help you do well. So the people that follow your project will be more inclined to help you, to share, to like, to get involved in this project because it benefits them as well. So community is a very big part of this new internet that is coming to play. So on my channel, I am going to be making a lot more videos about decentralization, about blockchain technology, about NFTs, about... VR and AI and all those other questions that you may have so I can't answer everything in this video I think web3 is a very third generation of the internet I think it's definitely the future of the internet and there are so many cool things that are going to come out of this I definitely think it is scary for people that that aren't working in this environment every day for me because I work with this technology every day and I'm building products for this type of technology for this type of internet that's coming out I've really adapted to my mind I'm just like there is so much that you can do like it's crazy and I think it can be a bit scary for some people but then I think about how you know when Facebook sort of came out I think people were scared to to give their information to sign up and I think it was a lot of the older generation now if you look at it most of the older generation are the people who are on Facebook and for example when people started doing online shopping you would connect your credit card to the internet and buy stuff I think that was another big jump that people were scared to do to internet shop why because you're giving your information online and now looking back you know it's it's a part of everyday life people are buying online every day some people only buy online because you know COVID they don't want to go in store so I think this internet is very much going in the direction that we as a community of people need and just in terms of information data transparency I think this is 
definitely a step in the right direction. And yeah, I'm very excited to be part of this community. So just to recap, Web3 is basically the third generation of the internet, the future of the internet. It is not NFTs and JPEGs and magic money and pictures of monkeys. And it's not any of that. Um, it's basically just the next step in our internet. It's about transparency, about openness, about giving the power back to its users, about community owned projects. It is about not allowing five major corporations to run all of the internet. For example, on Instagram, like I know a lot of people, as an artist particularly, a lot of artists will make their Instagram their personal portfolio. What happens if one day Instagram decides, eh, we wanna quit, and they just gone, Instagram finished, eh, we just got over it. Like, obviously that won't happen, but it could. You never know. I think there wasn't a thing the other day where WhatsApp or Instagram or something, just one of the servers, something went poof and then no one had Instagram or WhatsApp, whatever it was for like a day. Yeah, things like that can happen. And imagine if you built your whole life, your whole store, your whole identity, your whole portfolio, everything is online as an Instagram profile. You do not own that. You do not own that information. You do not own that portfolio. You do not own any share in Instagram. They can take it away from you as easy as they gave it to you. But in Web3, you can build and create your own little bubble. <laughs> and I think it is like, you know, it's, it's the same as building your own website and, and that belongs to you. That platform belongs to you. It's the same thing where you as a person have ownership of your assets. You have proof of that ownership because there are things such as blockchains, which store all that information openly. Anyone can access it. They can see who the owner is, where the money is going, where it is coming from, how much, like everything is public on that blockchain. So it's it's very difficult to squeeze in there and change data without anyone noticing. Okay, so I hope I haven't confused you too much about what Web3 is. This is just also the tip of the iceberg. There are so many resources available. There's podcasts you can listen to. There's videos that you can watch. There are books and white papers and websites you can read. There is so much information available right now. You just need to filter through it and find the information that is correct don't want to be feeding yourself misinformation especially at the start of this really cool internet age i hope i haven't confused you too much but i hope that i've like put a little spark in you to do some research and see what the future of this internet holds i am going to be making a video about nfts very soon and the power of nfts and the future of nfts and i also just want to throw in a little thing quickly about nfts a lot of people will say oh what's an nft it's such a scam like it's just a jpeg okay first of all it's not just a jpeg because i meant pngs not jpegs but anyway <laughs> okay i know that's not that's got nothing to do with it but anyway no it's not just a jpeg it is a piece of technology. It is a very cool piece of technology. It basically shows proof of ownership. For example, okay, this analogy has been used so much and I hate that it's used so much, but it works so well. Basically, if you walk into the Louvre and take a picture of the Mona Lisa, which I've done actually <laughs> twice, but anyway, if you walk into the Louvre and take a picture of the Mona Lisa, do you own the Mona Lisa? No, I wish I did from that, but no, you don't. You own a picture of the Mona Lisa. Do you own the original? No. Will you ever own the original? Probably not. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I can just go and screenshot an NFT, and yes, you can. I'm not arguing with that. Like, it's very easy to screenshot something, but do you own it? And for example, if you want to support me as an artist, and you think, I don't know, in 10 years time, this girl's gonna be like crazy up there making really great art, and like everyone's gonna want a piece of her artwork. And do you want to buy a piece and show that you own that piece of information? NFTs are a perfect way to do that. You can buy it from them. There is a piece of code written in that image, in that NFT, in that piece of like, data, there is code that states it went from my wallet to your wallet and therefore you are the owner. <laughs> Anyone can take a picture and screenshot it and print it and do whatever they want to do with it, but they will not own the original. And that is the thing with this technology is you can prove that you own it. It's a public ledger and you can easily prove that you own that asset that you say you own or don't own. So guys, I hope this gave you a bit more insight into Web3. I hope I didn't confuse you too much, but hopefully it gave you a little spark to go and research some more, found out more information about it. So yeah, have a great day wherever you are in this world and I will see you very soon. Bye. 
So there you have it. That is a video that I recorded almost three years ago and it's still very relevant today as you can see how passionate I am about what I do and I'm still passionate about all of this today. It's exciting to know that we're part of the change makers for the next version of the internet and all of these exciting and fun projects and products that are coming out. And I'm very excited that I get the opportunity to be able to create these products, you know, create the UI for them, create the SaaS for them, create the websites for them. And it's very exciting. I entered the Web3 tech space in 2021. So I'm going on four years being in the tech space. So I no longer find this very scary and it's really fun to learn about all the new products and stuff that are coming out. So if you have any questions from this video, let me know in the comments. I'd love to start a conversation with you guys. And this year, I really want to create a community amongst my YouTube followers and subscribers. And I want to be able to have open communication with you guys in the comments and yeah, just learn from each other. I think that is the beauty of the internet and the beauty of YouTube is that we are all here to learn and grow together and it's really fun that we can bounce ideas off of each other and learn that way. I hope you guys had a wonderful festive period and that if you're back at work, good luck. I started work today on Friday the 3rd of January so I'm bright and early up in my studio starting to work on things, planning my life and sorting out YouTube content planning as well because I have a lot of things planned for YouTube. It's going to be so much fun. I hope you guys have a lovely day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you soon. Bye!